splitting, splitting, splitting. Pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me, coming through, pardon me, pardon me. So sorry. Do beg your pardon. Okay, well, happy Wednesday morning to you all. It's hump day. It's, uh, what is it, September the 7th, about 7 a.m. Sun is uh, just starting to come up. Take the little navy for a work commute this morning. Uh, need to get fuel. Brought it home from the warehouse last night. Uh, hadn't been ridden in, oh my God, uh, at least three weeks. So I'm gonna head out to uh, the fuel station, take this thing in uh, for a few work commutes this morning. It looks like the weather's gonna be better. Uh, we're gonna have rain this afternoon, according to the forecast, but uh, we finally broken out of our rainy, gloomy every day for the last two weeks uh, spell. Oh, don't you die. Uh, <laughs> uh, we needed the rain, that's for sure. But man, it was uh, getting a little bit crazy. We've had some record flooding here in uh, Texas. Not so much in the Houston area, but uh, definitely in Texas lately. So needed to slow down just a little bit. Alright, 297. Yeah, it's great to see it under three bucks again. Just over the top of the bar. Oh, I went over a buck. Yep, just over the top of the bar. 110. Didn't need a lot, but you guys saw where the gauge was. It was below the half mark, and that only took 0 0.36, 0 0.4. So, gauge isn't quite linear, but uh, when this thing's only getting 67 to, or yeah, about 67 miles to a full tank, uh, roughly 75, 78 miles to the gallon, uh, for my commutes, I need a, a full tank every day I start. Another moto commuter. Okay then. On the road again. <laughs> Every now and then this thing makes a really hard start. That uh, starter gear engages and makes a loud clunk. So the other projects that I want to do when I get into this uh, are to upgrade the variator weights. Uh, put some sliders in there. I have two different sets of Dr. Pulley sliders for it. I can't remember the weights that I got. I want to say I got uh, 12 and 14, if I recall. Uh, should be pretty straightforward, it's just like any other GY6 or small uh, scooter engine. Just get into that uh, variator cover and swap out the weights. It's not too hard. Uh, what makes the Navi a little bit different is the uh, starter gear uh, has its own little separate cover that's kind of pinched into place by the outer cover so it's not all one piece and uh, uh, just watching other people's videos they, they say it's kind of tricky you got to make sure you get it in the right place so anyway I'll try that out and the Kickstarter gear uh, everything should stay pretty much together as long as you don't pull it apart we shall find out so I've got the lighting upgrade AC to DC conversion, variator sliders, uh, can't remember, there's something else I was going to do to it. Oh yeah, uh, carburetor, derp. The uh, air fuel mixture screw. Uh, I have a an aftermarket thumb adjustable screw coming in from uh, Amazon, it should be here in a few days. Uh, I think it's Kimimoto is the brand, but it's an extended uh, thumb screw and they would just replace the entire uh, air fuel screw assembly so we'll find out if it fits the Navi properly I need to pull the factory one out of there and take a look at it measure the length and uh, you know the the needle diameter uh, tip size on the end of it make sure it's all the same otherwise I'll be introducing more variables don't want to do that eventually I'll put tires on here I was discussing that last night uh, Considering we have rain in the forecast this afternoon, I'm not looking forward to that on the Navi. Uh, these OEM tires were not the greatest in the wet. I was looking at uh, a few 
different options, Maxis and a couple of others, but apparently they're only available overseas and you have to order them. It takes a while to get here, if they ever get here. Of course, you have to pay the shipping, which is real pricey and all that. So I'm looking around for uh, alternatives that might be stocked by uh, U.S. vendors, you know, U.S. resellers. <laughs> the truck's doing the same thing I am. Cheating. Skip the line. Nice wheels. <clears throat> Uh -huh. So the other thing I'm going to do as part of the uh, carburetor tuning and tweaking on this bike is uh, I'm going to get another wideband O2 meter lambda sensor. I had one a while back and uh, it went away with uh, all of my race car projects and you know uh, I was big into the DSM sports and stuff like that as far as the uh, turbo cars and going fast and doing crazy stuff so I don't have any of uh, those tuning and tweaking tools but a uh, wideband O2 will help to dial this in and any other bikes that I plan on working on which will be uh, probably the CT125 and also the Super Cub uh, if I get into playing with the uh, EFI on those. I do have the uh, computer to do the tuning uh, in the case of those bikes, but with this one there's no computer. You just uh, mess around with your uh, pilot jet and main jet and needle position, uh, air fuel screw, a little bit of tuning and tweaking and watch your uh, EGTs and specifically, you know, the, the wideband O2 at low throttle, mid throttle, full throttle. And uh, if you can keep it in the right range uh, where it doesn't stumble and you're still fairly lean, then uh, you got it dialed in. Ooh, good morning, sunshine. That's bright. <laughs> really bright. Can't see anything. Man, that's bright. Woo. Splitting, splitting, splitting. Pardon me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Coming through. Pardon me. Pardon me. So sorry. Do beg your pardon. traffic slow enough this morning that I will do an uh, on and off. Hello, you like these brakes, don't you? One thing the Navi does not have is good brakes. <laughs> You've got to grab a hand and a foot full of these things to uh, stop. Sometimes I think flintstoning it might actually be better. I'm cheating again. They're stopped too long. I'm not going to wait behind that. I'm going to get hit. Yeah. People rubber banding, not paying attention and staying with the flow. lanes wide stopped on the highway welcome to the Houston commute you want in come on in wow all right now 
drive it's going to be in the fast lane <laughs> if you call this fast Well, that's the end of the uh, highway portion of the commute. Now it's just surface streets on to my destination. No muss, no fuss. Path of least resistance. Diddly. <clears throat> I can smell diddly. Ugh. <laughs> she is stuck. I'm going to wait for her. I'll wait for you. Go ahead. <laughs> You in there, fella? Oh, I see. It's clogged. All right, well, I'm going to shut it down now because uh, I'm pretty much here. So I will catch you all uh, for the afternoon commute. All right, everybody. Welcome back to my Wednesday in progress. Uh, I am knocking off a little bit early today. It's uh, about 2.45. Ooh, that seat's hot. Um, We've got some uh, thunderstorms coming into the metro here, so I'm going to try to beat them home. Hopefully, I will uh, not have to don the rain gear. Bump. Bump. Yeah, we got like a 40% chance of uh, some pretty strong scattered thunderstorms, and I looked at the radar right before I uh, walked out of my warehouse there, and uh, it looks like they are headed in to the metro from the north. So I got about maybe 45 minutes uh, before it gets soggy around here. I'm starting to see some of the heavy clouds up there to the north. So maybe I can get home. We'll see. Got a couple days worth of video that I need to edit and crunch down, try to put out there on YouTube. I'm trying to get back into a posting schedule again. I haven't uh, been posting too much lately work and other things that have been going on have uh, kept me away from motorcycles and my hobbies and all that so just uh, trying to get back into a rhythm I need to go pick up my Riker from the shop it's been sitting there waiting on me now for at least a couple of weeks uh, so I've got to get it 
out of their hair <laughs> using a parking space or chewing up garage space over there at their uh, shop so I need to get it out of there and then uh, I don't know figure out what I want to do with it uh, I don't know if that's going to be uh, keep it and put up with the alignment problems that I'm always fighting or if I'll just can it uh, and, and sell it off I mean it's fully refreshed now uh, it's got a new CVT rollers belt uh, the major service was done for the 12,000 mile service uh, all that and uh, unfortunately none of the stuff was covered by my extended warranty even though uh, the uh, broken CVT rollers were what debilitated the transmission or the CVT in that thing uh, they're not covered under warranty so I don't know again I'm not real happy with uh, the BRP warranty service uh, customer service whatever you want to call it just I don't know I haven't had a good experience with them this is the first road going uh, Can-Am or BRP product, product that I've ever had uh, I've had a few of their watercraft over the years I've had the little uh, sea do runabout uh, jet skis, whatever you want to call them. Uh, had one of the Sea-Doo uh, Speedster little jet boats, and those were good, you know. But boats and watercraft always have problems. You know, everybody that has ever owned a boat or jet ski knows that they're kind of money pits in general. You're always putting money into them for something. So those little quibbles and quabbles that I had with those I, I didn't really anticipate were going to translate over into <laughs> a road going machine that you expect to be reliable and I know that there are some uh, Riker owners out there that have put just tons of miles I, there's one guy that posts on Facebook I can't remember uh, his handle he's on Facebook and Instagram uh, I'll see if I can link the name here in the video but he's got like 70 or 80 thousand miles on his Riker 900 now uh, and it's a 2019. I don't remember if he has a rally or the just the 900 Ace, the non-rally version, but uh, it seems like the non-rally version has had fewer problems, uh, at least with the 2019, the first-gen version. Uh, the ones that I've ridden have all been better than mine, uh, and I just haven't heard other owners uh, have nearly the problems that I've had. Uh, and it's not just me. I, other Riker owners that I've let ride my Riker, you know, I've swapped Rikers with them. They're like, oh my God, that thing's terrible. <laughs> so it's not just me. I was just one of the lucky ones, I guess. Early test pilot, and uh, I ended up having a few problems that uh, others didn't have. And unfortunately, they're just not easy to resolve with my Riker so uh, once I can get it into a condition where I feel comfortable passing it on uh, I'll trade it in or sell it private party something just you know kind of distance myself from that whole issue um, just upgrade to something else uh, I don't know if I'll get into the uh, something else in the three-wheel platform or if I'll just get out of it completely uh, but at this point if I could get I don't know, 6,000 out of it, I'd be happy. Six or eight. Uh, six to, yeah, six to eight, somewhere in there. I haven't looked at the value of it. Uh, it has exactly 12,000 miles on it. Uh, obviously, it's been maintained well, but, you know, power sports products don't really uh, follow the same depreciation schedules as uh, vehicles, you know, cars and trucks. I'm looking forward to tearing into the uh, carburetor and doing some of the upgrade projects on this. I'll be curious to see if the uh, air fuel reset on this uh, fixes the rich running condition, because this one definitely runs rich. Uh, before I do it though, I want to get that uh, wideband O2 sensor so I can take measurements of it and just confirm my suspicions uh, that it's running rich. I mean, you can tell it's rich just by the smell, but I'd like to see where the AFR is sitting. It's probably down around 10.5, maybe 10.7. It's pretty rich. 
I don't know how that translates to uh, you know where the AFR is at high throttle positions, but definitely uh, idle and low throttle. It's way rich, way way rich. Uh, so that should also help the fuel consumption on this bike and get it closer to Honda's claimed or advertised 110 miles per gallon. Uh, I don't think it'll ever see that unless you're just idling along at 25 miles an hour, which isn't a real world scenario. I'm going to get run over. And people always say, well, you know, of course the bike's not going to get you know, what the manufacturer claims it's going to get, that's uh, ideal test conditions, yeah, blah, blah, blah. That's not really the case. Uh, if you look at the published specs on uh, the other mini motos like the Grom, uh, I'm not sure about the Monkey, but definitely the Super Cub and the PCX, uh, they were all rated pretty conservatively on their uh, mileage figures. Uh, my experience with them is they've been beating those uh, published specs by 15 to 25 percent. I want to say, if I remember right, uh, Honda was claiming that the uh, PCX got like 92 miles to the gallon or something, if I remember right, uh, but around town, mine gets 130, 125 to 130 consistently. Crazy. And even out on the highway, uh, you know, but my PCX's lifetime average mileage uh, over 8,000 miles now is 99.2 or 97.2, something like that. Very high 90s, just a tick under 100 miles to the gallon. And I flog the you know what out of it. Uh, that's highway running at, you know, 60 plus miles an hour, just wringing its neck all the time. If I ride it more conservatively, it jumps up into the 115, 120 range real quick. So the published specs are just kind of a guideline. Uh, it can be above or below that, but in my Navi's case, you know, the 110 published figure, uh, and then it's getting <laughs> closer to like 75, eh, that's, a, that's a big spread, it's a big percentage. It's 35 something percent less than what it's, uh, advertised to get and that's not the good side to go down you know to have a discrepancy it's better to have a discrepancy uh publish low and you're getting better you know under deliver and or under promise and over deliver and this one is uh, over promising big time when i get in there and start working on the carburetor uh i'll do the uh uh, Dr. Pulley sliders in the variator and that should also help with uh, top end uh, because that, that uh, higher ramp profile you know pinches the belt up uh, higher up in the you know, a larger radius in the front so you get a better gear ratio if you want to call it that better pulley ratio so that lowers engine RPM for any given speed as long as you're not full in the throttle I noticed that my PCX uh, got about uh, somewhere between a 10 and 15% uh, efficiency boost when I installed the Dr. Pulley sliders in the factory variator. And then with the Dr. Pulley variator, the, you know, the whole performance variator with the sliders, it jumped up even more as long as I can keep my wrist out of it, you know, ride conservatively, it does pretty well. Hoping for the same boost uh, on this one. All right, well, home again, home again. Another commute done and gone. And my Navi is back down to pretty much where it started this morning uh, on the fuel gauge, uh, just a little under the half mark. So that means I've used about a half a gallon, maybe a little over, to do my 40-something mile commute today. Yeah, about 40 miles, maybe a little less. Might only be like 36 to 38 miles because I didn't go all the way into my normal breakfast spot or do any other running around. It was uh, a little bit short of my normal destinations. Anyway, uh, I will bid you all farewell. Uh, I have some... Uh, contractors here uh, tearing up my house uh, doing some repairs so uh, it's going to be messy and ugly and I'll uh, <laughs> save the save that for later catch y'all later
Okay. All right. Thanks for the help.